Let's bring this from the ancient world in its tenuous kind of esoteric kind of way. Whack bang in, in, into the modern world. When you do the genealogy, I said earlier that the um, Sumerian tablets and other uh, accounts say that this hybrid bloodline, this Nephilim, as the Bible talks about, were put into positions of ruling royal power, the divine right to rule by your bloodline. When you do the genealogy, and I've gathered together from different sources, some of which are trying to expose the manipulation, most of which are just genealogical sources. And when you pull it all together, and I have to say this is an interim report because it's so painstaking, some astonishing things start to appear. We're going to start, and this is one bloodline. One, and it's offshoots, it's very near offshoots. I've called it the Windsor Bu Bu Bush uh, bloodline. Um, when you start to understand how this works, you are able, not through prophecy, not even through genius, to predict that George W. Bush, three years ago, is going to be pretty close to the presidency, if not the presidency uh, uh, itself. Here he is now one step from it as I talk. We start this bloodline in the, with the ancient royal lines of Egypt, Sumer, the Phoenicians, uh, another very, very um, advanced people from the ancient Near and Middle East, Babylon, which was the, seems to be the reptilian center of these bloodlines in the ancient world, Troy and Greece. Incidentally, what kind of um, happened was this, this Illuminati was based in Babylon. And when it moved to Rome, it moved its epicenter to Rome. That's where we had the, when we had the Roman Empire. And then more recently, I'll come to you this afternoon, it moved its epicenter to London. That's when we had the British Empire. Just a coincidence, nothing to worry about. So, so this bloodline comes down through Philip of Macedonia, uh, uh, the father of Alexander the Great, who before the age of 33, when he died in Babylon, took over the whole of that area you keep seeing on that repeating map. Um, Egypt, Babylon, right up, up into um, India, etc. Took over the whole thing. This same bloodline comes down through Cleopatra, the Cleopatra, Julius Caesar, um, Mark Antony, Herod the Great, the uh, king in the Jesus stories, and through the Piso family, a Roman aristocratic family, who, as I um, will talk about a little more this afternoon, but particularly in my book, The Biggest Secret, and particularly on a website called the Piso homepage, the evidence is very compelling that the Piso family wrote the original gospel stories. Now, same bloodline, Constantine the Great, the Roman Emperor, who in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea, took those gospel stories and turned them into the religion we call Christianity as we know it today through something called the Nicene Creed. The coincidences are amazing. It comes down through the Merovingians in France. Now the Merovingians have had a lot of stuff written about them recently in books like Holy Blood, Holy Grail and um, others relating to the same story um, indicating that the Merovingians have a right to rule because they are the bloodline of Jesus. Well I think some people have misdirected us in that way by genuine accident and I think there are some, particularly one if you look in my website, who is misdirecting us um, absolutely knowingly to think that it's some bloodline of Jesus when actually it's a reptilian bloodline. He's a guy who is actually the current head of an ancient society called the Royal Court of the Dragon. The Merovingians were the people that founded Paris. They came, <clears throat> they knew their bloodline came from Troy and the Trojan Wars. So they named Paris after um, one of the people involved in the Trojan War stories, Prince Paris. They um, worshipped um, an ancient goddess, which these ancient people very much did, called the goddess Diana, a goddess of the moon. Just outside the original Paris, the Merovingians, they built sacrificial chambers, underground chambers, for their rituals to the goddess Diana. Where they built those chambers is now called the Pont Dalma Tunnel, where Diana, Princess of Wales, died in the car crash. Pont Dalma actually means bridge or passage of the moon goddess, which is what Diana was supposed to be. That was a ritual 
murder when you see the massive symbolism and other evidence surrounding it. Um, the Merovingians, um, that, they come through to the Windsors, we'll see that. Now Charlemagne, Charlemagne was the most ma famous monarch of what we now call France. Massively powerful. Many offshoots came from him. 33 of the 42 presidents of the United States from Washington to Clinton go back to this guy alone. How many, how many hundreds of millions of people have lived in the United States since 1776? Hundreds and hundreds of millions. Not only that, they come from a pool of, uh, a gene pool of amazing diversity to create the people we call Americans. You would think that of the 42 that have become President of the United States, there might be a bit of genetic diversity, bit of a chance. No, because presidents are not selected or elected by ballot, they are selected by blood. And we're having another experience that at this very time in America. Comes down through the Habsburgs, massively powerful, the most powerful family in the so-called Holy Roman Empire for centuries. Come down through the Medici family and the House of Lorraine. The Medici family and the House of Lorraine um, employed two people, both of them did. Um, and there's an interesting, um, interesting background to the two people they employed. One was called Christopher Columbus, both major Illuminati bloodlines, this one massively so today, very much involved in the reptilian research, uh, the um, area of Lorraine near the French-German uh, border. And the other person, both of these Illuminati families with the underground stream of knowledge they were keeping from everybody employed, was a man called Nostradamus. The reason Nostradamus had phenomenal knowledge compared with the rest of the population, I'm not saying he was a bad man or anything like that, I'm just saying where he got it from. This underground stream that has been keeping it from the rest of us all this time right to the present day. So the bloodline continues. It comes down through the Plantagenet royal dynasty that manifested out of France into Britain. King John who signed the Magna Carta. The kings of uh, England, Henry I, II and III, the Stuart dynasty. The Georges, George III there involved when the uh, uh, Declaration of Independence happened in the United States through these Edwards to Queen Victoria, German bloodline um, and on the British throne, all the way through all these others up to the present day, Queen Elizabeth II, Prince Charles, and right down to the present day. It goes through the French royal dynasties, right the way through these to Louis XVI and his wife, Marie Antoinette, who were both uh, killed in the French Revolution. And one of their uh, children, very small boy at the time, one of the princes, escaped that. And eventually, thanks to King George III of England, because they're all connected, he was brought to the United States under the name Daniel Pazur. When you do the uh, research into the background of who really controlled the major, major industrial companies of America, like Carnegie and Morgan, etc., you find that was the guy who owned the holding company that owned the flipping line. Same again same bloodline. This bloodline comes down through the presidents, George Washington, again a British aristocratic bloodline, through all these down to the present day and down to Jeb Bush, George Bush's son who's governor of uh, Florida, and uh, George W. Bush who has a great chance of being the next president of the United States. But it, it is amazing that when you start to do the research of where this bloodline goes, you can start to predict where these um, various people are going to come from in the positions of power. What a coincidence that during the Gulf War, George Bush, Dan Quayle, his vice president, and Colin Powell, the head of the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff, same bloodline, all involved in the um, Gulf War. It comes down through the Scottish bloodline families. Um, Scotland's a major, major centre where these bloodlines came out of. Comes down through Ka Kaiser Wilhelm II, the guy at the time of the uh, First World War. Maximilian, the Emperor of Mexico, he was a Habsburg. Down through the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and the ruling financial and business elite of today.